you have a patient presented by the referred by the gynecologist for right sided hydroureteronephrosis the patient had right sided large ovarian cyst removal post operatively she was well for almost 6 weeks but then developed a nagging right side loin pain for which they did ultrasound which showed right side hydroureteronephrosis the surgeon felt that it could be related to the right side oophorectomy surgery how are you going to evaluate her so i'll see this patient in my clinic um, i will take a brief history uh, examination the presence of chaprom with the patient's consent and arrange for investigation uh, i will review the operative note uh, uh, prior to reviewing the patient um, i will check the histology from the ovarian cyst and uh, i will see the plan is there any further treatment needed from the gynecology uh, side i will take a patient uh, history about any pain at the moment Uh, any history of uh, fever, um, rigor, feeling unwell, um, any visible hematuria, any urinary incontinence or a leak about her past medical and surgical history, previous gynecological history, uh, drug allergies, and then I'll examine the patient in the presence of chaperone with the patient consent, looking for any palpable mass or tenderness in the loin, any palpable uh, bladder, um, examine, um, inspect the genitalia and examination with the simsis speculum. And after that, I will do urine tests for uh, urine dipstick. I will arrange for a baseline uh, full blood count and renal function. and i will arrange for the patient to have a contrasted ct urinary tract since my concern is a possible uh, ligation of the right ureter during uh, the uh, cystectomy procedure okay her investigations were normal no signs of any inflammatory markers increase her ct urogram did show right side hydroureteron nephrosis and there is a sharp cut off at the level of the just distal to crossing vessels uh left kidney seems to be functioning well without any blockade contrast reaching bladder adequately what are we going to do so for um this patient uh my preferred approach is uh, um to do uh the minimally invasive by a cystoscopy retrograde study and possible insertion of a stent if it is possible so i will consent the patient uh for a gi procedure involving cystoscopy a uh, retrograde study and then i will try to uh pass a guide wire followed by a catheter insertion uh, to make mag- to maximize to increase the chance of success of my procedure i will arrange with one of my interventional radiologist colleague to be available in case we can't uh, approach it from down below then he will be ready he can do a nephrostomy percutaneous nephrostomy and then uh, possibly try to insert an anti grade Uh, stent it's like a rendezvous procedure uh, which may um, help to bypass uh, the stricture if it's possible okay how will you do this rendezvous procedure so uh, it will be done by a surgeon uh, from down below and uh, an interventional radiologist from the kidney i will start by doing cystoscopy retrograde study to identify the um, distal uh, segment of the ureter at the same time the radiologist will uh, put an ephrostomy which should be straightforward since the system is dilated and um, he will put some contrast so we can see the uh, uh, cut off of the upper segment of the ureter and then we can determine the length of the um, uh, injured segment of the ureter i will try to pass a guide wire if i'm if i can if not then he will try to pass a guide wire from uh, upward uh, and then if he is s- successful we can uh, leave an integrated stent in place Okay if there is uh, no way the guide wire can be passed both retrograde or antegrade what other choices you have So in this case since it is 6 weeks since the uh, injury um I will just ask the uh, radiologist to keep an ephrostomy in place uh which will relieve the obstruction in the kidney and preserve the kidney function and then I will arrange for the patient to have an open uh, repair at 3 months from the initial surgery Okay just to add there uh, rendezvous procedure not only stops just with uh, passing the guide wire in case if the stricture is so tight and it is not possible with the guide wire for example f- from below a surgeon can have a semiregiri retroscope from above a surgeon can have a flexible ureteroscope and um, one of them 
can switch off their light source and they can see the light source from the other partner and try to use a laser to create a channel on the scar and yeah. uh, that can help to pass the guide wire and then you can do a balloon dilatation in the same sitting try to put as much bigger stent as possible sometimes we can do more than 4.5 french which is okay to start with and then later once things getting epithelized we can slowly do a balloon dilatation and do some reconstruction also let yeah. us assume that your patient uh, they are not able to see the light uh, across and they are not able to do a kind of a tunneling as you said she has a nephrostomy in place so how are you going to reconstruct her So I will consent the patient uh, for an open uh, exploration and repair of the right ureter, um, uh, and uh, the, the information that we get from the uh, um, anti-grade and retrograde uh, uh, pyelogram should should let us know exactly the site and the length of the uh, defect on the ureter. If it is in the lower ureter and it is less than two centimeter. Uh, which could be due to just a, a, a suture or ligature, then I uh, may be able to um, just excise the segment and do direct ureter urethrostomy. If the segment uh, is a little bit uh, longer in the lower ureter, then I'll try to do ureteric re-implantation with or without SOAS hitch. Uh, if the defect is in the uh, middle part of the ureter, Uh, then I will uh, try to do uh, again either urethro urethrostomy, trans urethro urethrostomy, or uh, Boare flap. Take me through the trans urethro urethrostomy procedure. So for trans urethro urethrostomy, I will um, attach. I will try to um, do a limited dissection of the uh, right uh, ureter with the preservation of uh, vascularity, and then I will try to anastomose the right ureter. Uh, Uh, side to end into the uh, left ureter. We need to exclude uh, the presence of uh, certain disease before the trans retroitrostomy, like the presence of upper tract TCC, uh, stones, um, a stricture on the uh, left ureter, and any distal obstruction. Um, um, after that, I will try to do the dissection of the right uh, ureter, uh, preferably retroperitoneal if it is possible. Uh, and then I can uh, take it into the left side and do the uh, uh, end to side anastomosis. Uh, I will put a stent, I will do spatulation, uh, watertight, uh, tension-free anastomosis. I will leave an unsuction uh, a drain and I will leave a urethral catheter in the bladder. Um, sometime uh, if the inferior mesenteric artery is Uh, in the way, uh, sometimes we may need to do an um, ligation of the inferior mesenteric artery. Okay. In the exam, you need to add that, say, for example, our scenario has got the injury in the right ureter. You need to mention that I am aware that I am using the normal non-injured lift pelvic alicial and ureteric system. And uh, it is a normal system. By chance, if there is a problem in the trans ureterostomy, you may jeopardize the drainage from the left kidney also. So yeah. I will run through this uh, significant uh, possibility preoperatively with the patient because end-to-end -end ureterostomy, especially if it is a upper ureteric stricture, is a quite an ideal choice. Other options, as you said, take me through the SOAS hitch procedure. So for the uh, so was uh, H, uh, we our aim is to uh, uh, give the bladder extra length uh, to uh, shorten the um, defect by uh, suturing the bladder into the tendon of so was minor muscle. So I will do uh, a small longitudinal uh, cystostomy incision, and then I will put uh, inspect the bladder from inside make sure that the bladder has a good capacity, you no know, other pathology inside. And then I'll put my fingers and pushing the bladder as much as possible toward the uh, psoas uh, minor tendon on that side. 
uh, if the uh, if the mobility of the bladder is limited, then I need to do a ligation of the superior vesicle pedicle on the contralateral side. And then after that, I will use um, uh, a PDS, a 2-0 PDS for fixation of the bladder into the solus minor tendon. I will be uh, careful not to injure the genitofemoral nerve, which is close to the um, solus minor tendon. Um, and then after that, we um, can either do a direct, uh, after that, I, I should be able to do a direct uh, reimplantation of the ureter into the bladder. And the sausage will give a support uh, for the uh, support and stability for the reimplantation. And then I will close the bladder over a catheter. How will you identify the genitofemoral nerve? Uh, usually it's visible by inspection. It should be a lateral to the psoas minor muscle. Okay. Take me through the Bavari flap procedure. So for the Bavari flap, we should ensure that the patient has a, a adequate functional bladder capacity, no previous history of bladder surgery or uh, radiotherapy. Uh, uh, the most important principle in creating Bavari flap is a wide base. Uh, and the length to the base should be four to one to ensure adequate vascularity. So I will um, do a, a U-shape uh, incision with the cautery. I will measure the defect in the uh, ureter, and then I will uh, take um, a U-shape a flap from the uh, dome of the bladder, and then reflect it upward, tubularize it, and then um, I will do an astomosis of the ureter to the um, uh, this flap, I will try to do uh, I will to do some mucosal tunneling of the ureter in order to reduce the rate of uh, reflux. Uh, I will put a stent through the repair. I will leave a catheter and abdominal drain um, and take it from there. Okay. And um, how are you going to follow up this patient? Let us assume your patient required a bovary flap with a stent in place. So for this patient, I will keep, uh, uh, I will take the drain uh, first within two to three days, where if the drain is not draining anything more than 40 mil per day, I will take the drain out first. The patient will be discharged on antibiotic in the presence of urethral catheter and urethric stent. I'll bring the patient back in two weeks for cystogram. And then if there is no leak uh, from the bladder or from the bowel flap, I will take the urethral catheter out and then uh, I will take the stent in about six weeks. This patient will need a long-term follow-up uh, since I'm concerned about uh, the possibility of stricture at the site of the anastomosis. Uh, therefore, I will arrange for the patient uh, to have a follow-up in uh, three months' time by having a blood test, check the kidney function. I will arrange for ultrasound to check if there is any hydronephrosis, and I will uh, do also um, a MAG-3 study um, to check the sepitrenal function and to exclude any obstruction. If there is any concern from the ultrasound or MAG-3 about a, a, a possible stricture, then I will arrange for a procedure in the form of cystoscopy, retrograde, plus minus erythroscopy. Okay. Um, just when you are saying the catheter instead of urethral catheter, uh, just spell it as bladder catheter because you will be saying uretric on and off. So the examiner should not get confused about uretric catheter. So instead of urethral catheter, say bladder catheter, okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. What kind of complications you may explain and you may expect in the Bowery flap? So the possible complication related to the bladder or to the flap, to the bladder, there may be reduction in the functional capacity of the uh, bladder and the patient uh, develops some uh, symptoms of frequency and uh, urgency and uh, uh, pain. Um, usually the bladder is a generous organ and by time there will be um, dilatation or will be stretching of the bladder and most of the time the bladder will uh, regain its functional capacity. Uh, regarding the site of anastomosis, there is a possibility of um, stricture uh, at that site, a uh, possibility of uh, reflux. Okay.